Well, welcome back to Blackjack. I'm not really in a welcome mood myself, though. You know why? Because not only did it take two hours, two hours, to find a place in my parents' house that wasn't streaming in sunlight and thus making the screen all... You know how it does. Then when I finally found a place and was able to adjust the shades just so, the computer crashed. And then, after I got everything started back up, and I started recording, and it said the computer had to be plugged in, and before I could plug it in, it went down. So, you know what that means? Something's gonna die! And that means it's time for a death battle conversation! I'm going to introduce you to a death battle that I really want to see. It's going to be a classic manga hero sort of versus one of the most popular fighting game characters today. Today, I would like to introduce you to Ranma Sautome. You see, Ranma was an ordinary high schooler, sort of, who went on a training trip with his father the head of the Anything Goes School of Martial Arts. And they went to China, where they went to the Cursed Springs of Josenkyo, where Rama fell into something known as the Spring of Drowned Girl. And now, whenever he is hit with cold water, he becomes girl-type Rama. Yep. Now, <laughs> that's when we get into the fun part, because Ranmo is engaged to Akane. I don't think I actually have a picture here with Akane, but that's her sister Nabiki right there, feeling up girl type. And, you know, they get the whole thing, and then there are other suitors for both of them, and it's all funny. It's called the martial arts sex comedy. It's more of gender comedy, but or physical sex. There's no actual sex. So I think that kind of stunted its marketing. Anyway, that's got nothing to do with why we're here. Why we're here is to talk about who these characters can kill. Anyway, this is the same where I'm opening and closing each file as I speak. Despite being a trained martial artist, Ranma is weaker in girl form. This is not really explained, and even though most of his powers come from his key, you know, the internal energy that everyone has, martial arts always talks about it, uh, girl type is said to have weaker key. This is never explained. All I can say is it's the 90s. It was a different time. The 80s and 90s, even. It was a different time, and the series is honestly sexist as hell, but it's still really funny if you look at it through the lens of it was a different time. <laughs> okay, so Ranma has the ability to learn pretty much any fighting style that's put in front of him, the most ridiculous fighting styles you will ever see, in about a week or less. He mastered martial arts figure skating, martial arts rhythmic gymnastics, martial arts tea ceremony, where his, where his primary opponent was a baboon. I said monkey, but it... Yeah. <laughs> and um, martial arts eating, which was not just an eating competition, you couldn't use your hands. You basically had to hoover it up with your mouth alone. And I don't mean like in a pie eating contest where you just... <clears throat> nope. You had to stretch your mouth. And... <sighs> he learned to do that. Uh, there. There. That is where I shall hold my head. <laughs> so anyway, and despite this, he still has some of his own techniques. Well, I mean, he knows. <sighs> I phrased that badly, but I'm not going to start the video over. 
Ranma's techniques include the chestnuts roasting on an open fire technique, which is an incredibly fast technique, as you can see there. He's blocking each pebble from an exploding boulder individually. He can throw several hundred punches, quote unquote, at once because they happen so incredibly quickly. That's his primary speed technique. His, what you'll usually see referred to as his ultimate technique, however, is the Hiryu Shoten Ha. It's used by lessening his emotions. In the middle of battle, you cool your aura and you use it to create a tornado punch against your opponent's no doubt hot aura. Yes, this takes temperature into account, sort of, in a very odd way. It's that kind of, you know, trying to explain things somewhat scientifically, but not. Here we see the after effects in, um, in this, which one is on top? There. In this picture, we see he is actually fighting three opponents. There's uh, one right above the last O, there's one under the M, and there's one underneath that guy. He's defeating three incredibly powerful opponents at one time with one punch. Let's see Saitama do that. Well, I mean, he could. He could take out the whole city, but you know what I mean. You can see the after effects, the wind alone. It is pretty darn amazing technique. However, that is not his ultimate technique. His ultimate technique comes about because his father, Genma, decided to teach him a forbidden technique. A technique so horrific that it defies description. So I'm going to describe it to you. You see, to learn the hideous technique known as the cat fist. Genma took Radva, wrapped him in fish sausages, and threw him into a pit of hungry cats. It didn't work. It traumatized poor Ranma, making him terrified of cats. That girl on top of him there is Shampoo, another martial artist who also fell in the Curse Springs and has declared herself Ranma's fiance. The panda in the back is the aforementioned Genma Satomi, Ranma's father. So, what do you do when you screwed up and you traumatized a kid to be terrified of cats? You wrap him in sardines and throw him into a pit of hungry cats. And he kept doing this over and over again until Ranma had finally learned the horror that is the cat fist. It's caused by extreme fear that destroys Ranma's consciousness to the point where he mentally becomes a cat. He uses air pressure swipes as claws. Just simply slashing at the air will cause damage into buildings and it will rip clothing and all kinds of stuff. He fights on instinct with absolute ferocity, but man, he's a cat, so he's not gonna be coming up with strategies or anything when he's in that state. He also, because he's a cat in that form, essentially, he will be very capricious. He can lose interest and leave. He can also end up cuddling someone. It was said that the only person that could get him to calm down was an old lady who lived up the block. And he would sit on her lap and she would pat his head and <laughs> it would be cute. Uh, he can be snapped out of this by, you know, calming him down. But... The ultimate horror of the cat fist lingers within him to this day. This can only be achieved, however, once his fear of cats reaches its peak. And that means exposing him to cats. Multiple cats, most likely. So who could possibly go up against such a 
bizarre character. Who else has such an incredibly specific breaking point to, to the point of absolute ridiculousness that you would use your super move, your absolute most powerful form from something so ridiculously specific? Why none other? than the fantabulous Sakura Kasagano. Let's move her around. That looks pretty amazing. She's on my head. She's on my head. <laughs> She's in the mirror. She must be over that way. <laughs> I love transparencies. <laughs> so, what could the phenomenal Street Fighter have in common with Ranma? Well, aside from being teenage martial artists, High school students able to learn massive techniques in a very short amount of time. Um, she mastered Dan's entire martial art in about half an hour. But that's Dan. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> it's a little different than normal. She learned... I want that figure, by the way, you know, if anyone out there is so inclined. Um, she originally wanted to be a competitive eater, though. You know, Ranma can teach her a few things about that. <laughs> uh, she also wanted to be a sumo wrestler. <laughs> she was talking about E-Honda. It's like, I want to be just like him. And her friend is like, you want to be 400 pounds? If I can! Uh, gotta remember, Honda is an extremely respected man in that series. Then why shouldn't he be? He's a good guy. Having his first name is Edmund? I don't know. Anyway. Okay. Sakura is a self-taught, primarily, martial artist. She was able to enter the World Warrior Tournament with minimal experience, which means she is just naturally one of the finest martial artists in the world. She adapted a lot of Ryu's moves on her own. She, that's really the only formal trainer she's had is Ryu. I mean, she tried to train under Dan, like I said, but it didn't really count. It, it's Dan. It's Dan, okay? It's Dan. That's really all that needs to be said. Huh. She uh, has adapted Ryu's style into her own specialty. Uh, here we see her Shinku Hadoken and, and her um, her house. <laughs> and she had, I keep opening outputs instead of sources. And, uh, oh, hey, all right, it did go as a gift. She could not help but taking the steps when she uses the show Ryu Ken. As you can see here, Ryu and Ken just tend to go straight up with it. She walks into it, although you don't really see it in that gif, I think. Even it was pointed out in the manga adaptation. Which I guess I could have photographed. However, she has Yeah, her Hadoken is imperfect, but she can charge it. Uh, to increase its power. However, this does shorten its range. So if someone is able to get out of the way really quickly, then she won't be able to hit them, even with her powerful Hadoken. But there is a darker side to her. She knows Shun Goku Satsu. Instant Hell Murder. AKA... You, ever, you know that bullshit move Akuma does that takes out, like, three-quarters of your health in one hit? Yeah. She can channel the Dark Hado. And I do mean dark. Because if you notice, her skin has gotten very dark in that picture. You know why? Well, here... What do you want with Ryu? 
There, it seems to be more emotionally based. However, the official explanation for why she can do it in, say, Marvel versus Capcom is because she got a sunburn. Now, of all the ridiculously specific super moves, or rather, ridiculously specific qualifications to perform a super move, it has gotten considerably darker since I started filming. <sighs> That's got to be up there with suddenly being exposed to a horde of cats. Now, I want to know, since both of those require them to be in what's essentially a rage over ridiculous things. Well, I, yeah, I know, okay, Ronma's is a severe trauma, but it's still cat, you know, I don't, I am the last person to make fun of anyone's legitimate triggers, but he mentally becomes a cat. That's a little different. So yes, between the both of them, coming down to the dark hado over a sunburn versus, you know, mentally becoming a cat, I gotta know, which of these two combatants do you think would prevail? There. All right. Which of those two combatants would win? Do we have the uh, teenager who is incredibly adept at picking up martial arts styles in the blink of a die and with a ridiculously specific ultimate attack qualification? Or the teenager who's capable of learning blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Let me know what you think. Tell me if you think uh, they're a good matchup for each other. Tell me who you think better matchups for these characters would be. I'll be back in just a bit with another death battle suggestion. Now, the the reason I'm chopping this up is because, you know, my computer has a tendency to crash, so I don't want to have to kill even more things. But I will. Because I got two more of these. Unfortunately, um... Mewtwo vs. Black War Greymon is not one of them. I just figure anyone who's seen those shows can figure that out for themselves. Anyone who's seen, you know, Pokemon the first movie, Mewtwo Strikes Back, and Mewtwo Returns, and anyone who's seen uh, Digimon Adventure Zero Two are going to be able to figure out on their own pretty much why those two uh, should go up against each other. Um, likewise, another death battle that I want, um, Agent 47 from Hitman, and uh, Elliot from Leverage. Uh, uh, I don't want to have to go through every single Hitman game and every single episode of Leverage. I mean, Leverage is a great show, but I've never actually played a Hitman game, but I think, you know, everyone's talking about what 47 can do, and I'm like, oh yeah, Elliot can match that. I don't know. I, I think that one is the least likely out of all of these to happen. But yes, I will be right back. And remember how I said that I would touch on uh, that smashing boulder and the little pig later? We're going to get right into that. <laughs> 